All right, so having seen how we can track faces, let's look at one more example, um, and that's how to track skeletons or your, your body's position in space. This is really cool. It works very similarly, um, and we're going to be using a model called PoseNet. This is also from TensorFlow. Um, I found it kind of difficult to get this working with P5.js, and fortunately, there's this really amazing project called ML5, um, which is designed specifically for this. So it takes these complicated systems, um, abstracts or simplifies them in some way that allows us to more easily use them with um, tools like P5.js. So you can check it out. Um, ML5 has tons of other stuff available, but what PoseNet gives us is our skeleton. So it gives us these key points at our different joints. It tracks them around the screen. It does a really, really great job. And we can use this for all sorts of cool stuff, um, ranging from just like figuring out the position of your body to making alternative or gestural controllers. You could imagine making really cool generative graphics that move um, and respond to your body's motion, all kinds of great stuff. Um, the other really nice thing about the ML5 um, project is that they have great documentation. So they include simple code that can get you started. They've got really nicely annotated um, description of all the settings. This is not always easy to understand from the original source code. Um, and if you look down at the bottom, oh, so they do also have, there's a lot of stuff here. They've got demos, um, including in P5.js format very often, which is awesome, um, video tutorials, and um, this thing that I really love, model and data provenance. So this is, um, in addition to this, someone has gone, it looks like this is a project started by Ellen Nichols, um, who has researched where does the data that this model has been trained on come from and who made it? And these are really important questions for AI and computer vision in particular um, for helping prevent or understand bias in these systems, um, the, the power structures who controls, who made these things. These are really important questions that are in addition to just how does this thing work? So um, the first thing that we need to do is import ML5 into our sketch here in the index. And then um, I've just created a really simple structure here for us to get started. Um, so I, and if you need to go back to the first face tracking video where we talk about some of what this stuff is. Luckily, one of the things that ML5 um, does is it makes it easier to integrate this with P5.js. So I can load my model right here. And in fact, all the hard work happens just in these few lines of code. Uh, this first one loads our model and um, it connects it to our video uh, variable that we've created here. And then one additional option I've included is that I'm asking it to only find one pose. And this just, again, makes it run a little better. Uh, it can detect more than one pose if you wanted to. Then this section here tells it what to do each frame when it finds a new video. So um, this on function means when, in this case, it finds a pose. It's going to run this function, and um, I'm asking it to set skeleton, which is a variable I've created, to the first set of predictions. All that's that's it. That's all we need to make this work. We don't need any async functions or anything like that because ML5 just kind of like tidies that up for us. And then I've got my draw here, same as before. I'm loading my um, checking if my video is loaded, checking if my skeleton um, has some data to it, and then I've got my scale point function. Um, this is a little different than in the previous examples because of the way positions are stored um, in ML5 and in this uh, pose net. So rather than be an array of with X and Y, it's actually an object that has an X and a Y point. So just FYI, if you copy paste it from a previous example, it's not going to work here. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and um, let's start just by printing the skeleton. Skeleton. Ah, that's a hard word to spell. And we'll do no loop here, just so we can see this. So we get this nice little thing popping up about ML5, and then we've got me frozen again, looking so weird. Um, anyway, so then we can see here, the data is in two different formats. The first is the skeleton, which is just raw list of all the points. And then kind of like face mesh, um, we also have these annotated points under pose. So we've got those key points, plus we also have the specific labeled joints, which I think is a really helpful thing for us. Um, we can also see that for each one, it's got an X and a Y, and it has this confidence score. How sure is it that this is here? In this case, 
it's got a position for my hips, even though they're like way down here uh, below the desk and it can't see them. Um, and this is one of the things that's really incredible about this. It's very robust, even if things disappear temporarily from view. Okay, so let's start by just drawing our skeleton points so that we can see that. And I'm just gonna copy paste this. So we've got our key points uh, list, and I think there's 17 of those or something like that. And I'm just gonna scale that again from the video dimensions to the screen and then draw circles. And so it'll load and you can see here, it's able to track me around. It's very quick, very robust. This is working really well. Um, it does also include some face points, which might be, again, as much as you need for your project, um, but this works really great, it's really cool. But this is not that interesting. It sort of just looks like a demo. Um, let's take a look at another, another thing that we can do here. Um, because we probably don't just want all the skeleton points. That's not that interesting to us. What if instead we want some specific points? So I'm gonna grab the, my wrists here um, and use these as kind of like a controller. Now, uh, in addition to the X and Y position, it also gives us um, a confidence score. This will be a number between zero and one. And um, maybe I only wanna draw this or use this if the confidence score is high enough. Um, so in this case, I kind of played around with this. I like this 0.3 number here. If they're both high enough, then we can grab um, those points and do something. So because left wrist and right wrist are a, an object that includes more than just position data, I'm gonna create a vector with the X and Y position, and I'm gonna scale it to the size of the screen. And I'll do the same thing for the right wrist. And this will just make it easier for me to work with like that. And then let's draw it. So we can say stroke 255, stroke weight. Let's do six, nice big line. And we can do a line between L dot X, L dot Y and the right side. And frozen again, there we go. And now we can see it's drawing a line between my wrists, which is pretty sweet. Um, and you could imagine this being, yeah, like some kind of input or controller for something more complicated that you make. Um, but with those points, we can't really do that much. There's not enough information there. So let's um, look at one more cool thing that we can do. And that is because these are vectors, there's some additional functions that are really, really helpful that will allow us to get some extra info. So for example, I can get the angle between those points using the oops, angle between function. So we specify one vector here, dot angle between and the other vector, and that'll give us the angle in radians and we can get the distance. So this will be again, L dot dist, and that gives us the distance between those two points. Um, we can, now you might imagine lots of great ways to use this, I'm just gonna print that info on the screen so that you can see it. Um, so I'm gonna print the angle and the distance here. And you'll notice this function NF here. You might've seen it in some other demos that we've done. NF is number format. And this takes um, a number in this case, like a decimal that's really, really long. And it keeps it to only two decimal places, which just makes it easier to see on the screen. Oh, we have an error, let's see. LX, ah, that's because this is from a different example. Let's do it like this, oops, <laughs> here we go. Hopefully, there we go. So um, I'm converting it to degrees and I've got my angle measurement here, but you can see now I'm at a 10 degree angle, 45 degree angle, negative seven, et cetera, et cetera, as I get closer, we can see that distance changes too. Um, so, you know, this hopefully gives you an idea of ways that we can extract information. You know, it's giving us these raw coordinates. There's lots of ways that you can think about using these simple, like, are you just in one half or the other of the screen? All the way to more complex stuff where you can start doing physics and stuff using um, these vectors. And we'll look at some more of that in the next project where we deal with simulation. But hopefully um, this gives you some cool ideas of other sorts of tracking that you can do. Um, one more thing you might wanna check out and that's hand pose. This is also available from ML5 and it's the same idea except it's for hands. Um, and this could be really cool for creating again, like gestural interfaces. You could just track the tip of your finger and use it to draw on the screen. 
again, you know, the possibilities here are limitless. I just wanted to give you an idea of how you use this. And then it's really up to you to plug in interesting, cool, creative ideas um, with this stuff.